In this lesson, we're going to look at the different ways of accessing tools in Houdini. So here we are in our space, and of course up here is the shelf where we can get the tube. Press enter to place that in the scene. We can change some of its parameters with the operation controls. We're going to have 14 columns, 6 rows, and let's start with a radius of 0.7 at the top and 0.5 below, and a height of 1.5. So your tool created a node and the node has parameters and we're making changes to those. We can then go to smooth wire shaded using the radial menu. Spacebar B to go to the side up to the four view system and back to the side view and we'll use the handle on that node to lift that up. Now if we go spacebar B a couple more times we go back to a 3D view and what we want to do now is change um, the rotation to 90 uh, just to line it up with the um, x-axis better and then we're going to get edges and we're going to double click and this is in preparation for our next tool uh, which we will access using the tab key and we're going to start typing polyfill and press enter so the tab key is another way of accessing tools and it's nice because if you know the name of the tool you just type type that tool out go to a quadrilateral grid and we're going to um, offset the corner just to line it up again with the x-axis there. And now let's get uh, back to see the whole piece of geometry. And what we want to do now is get a different selection type. We're going to go to points. We're going to select the ones in the middle. And now we're going to go to the scale tool, which is right here on the tool shelf here, and scale that out. Now this puts down a node, it puts down an edit node, and we can use soft selection to, uh, or soft edit radius to just sort of pull that out, get a nice shape there to the cup. And there we go. And once we get that, uh, we're going to want to change our selection to uh, primitives. And then we're going to select everything with N. And then we're going to get our tool using the radio menu, so C, up to poly extrude. I'm going to push that in rather than pull it out. And there's an option on here to output back. So that'll give us the whole thing. Now it's going in the wrong direction. We can tell because the dark surface means the normal's in the wrong direction. We can press N and we're going to go tab reverse and that will get us back to the everything pointing in the right direction. Okay, now let's select uh, this polygon um, right here. This is um, going to be the beginning of a handle that we want to create using PolyBridge. Uh, now PolyBridge we can find up on the polygon shelf. Uh, so it's uh, th that one there and there's PolyBridge. But before we do that, let's not have anything selected to start. We'll have nothing selected. And in this case we're going to go PolyBridge. It will then prompt you for the selection. You can see down below. So I'm going to select that one enter. Now it asks for a second selection for the opposite side and we press enter. And it's not exactly what we want but we can tweak some parameters to get that to work. Now we're going to make it a curved one with 10 divisions and let's just increase the magnitude of um, both the beginning and the end of that bridge. Now once we have that we can just tumble around a little bit and see okay well first things first is it's twisted a little bit so we want to go to the change that so now it's not twisted but it's going the wrong direction so we're going to go to this part here and say explicit direction and we're not getting a handle we should be getting a handle at this point but there's a quick way to fix that we'll just go to the select tool and go back to the handle tool uh, the handle tool will always bring that back uh, and then once we have that we can take this handle and say you know what we want to put that on the other direction and there we go just somewhere in there we're going to get what we want and we could do the same thing with the other handle if we wanted uh, make it explicit and just tinker around with it to get exactly what we want. Now let's revisit uh, that idea of the handle. So if we're in the select tool and we have the poly bridge selected, we don't see any handles. The reason is we need to be in the handle tool. It's the only place where we're going to see those those interactive handles, so it's very important to be aware of that. Now with this node we're also going to go down to um, a different parameter called the thickness uh, sort of ramp and that allow us to sort of change the shape of that bridge uh, through its over its path. Um, now that di didn't require a handle in the 3D view but uh, it was available on the parameter pane. 
So now that we have that, uh, we're going to go tab subdivide. Now, nothing is subdividing because we did the tool first. We have to select and then enter. So Houdini can do either do a selection action or action selection. You can do both. And um, we set the depth of that to two. So now we want to select everything and then do a shatter. So there's a, a selection action as opposed to the action selection we did with subdivide. Uh, there's a node in there called chunk centers. This shelf tool actually put down a few nodes and we can change, add more cracks. And then we can add a tool here in the network editor itself. So we're going to put down an exploded view node. Now to do that, we have to then wire it in and we have to set its display flag because we're not seeing the result uh, in the scene view. So there's a couple extra steps if you decide to do it there in the network. Now let's compare that with doing it in the scene view. So let's say we go back to this shape here and we want to do a transform. So we press N to select everything, tab transform. Immediately we get a handle. The node is placed down and its display flag is on. So that we've saved a few clicks by doing it this way uh, and that's worth noting. So if you can do it in the scene view, you can reduce the number of clicks on your day-to-day -day actions. Uh, but sometimes the network editor just works better uh, for, for that particular thing. In this case, it wired it. Uh, we don't need that going into the exploded view, so we're just going to branch those off and we'll keep working with the transform node. Now, one other way of doing it in here is if we put a color node down, is if we wire it in between these two, we don't have to worry about setting the display flag so much because it's just already part of the flow of the data, so uh, of the chain of the network. So in this case, putting it in between worked out quite well. We didn't, uh, that maybe even easier than trying to do the scene view. Now from the transform, we can actually right click on that output and then we're going to type RBD bullet solver. And in this case, uh, because we connected it to the end, we get it already connected, but we still have to set the display flag. So slightly different, but another way of accessing a tool. And then from there, we can go in and set the ground plane to ground plane and um, maybe set properties 10,000. And there we go. And we can press play to see the results. So now you know how to access tools in Udini using the radial menu, the tab key, and the shelf. Good luck.